good morning. This is the part that we will cut away when we uh, before we upload this to YouTube. Morning, still waiting for my coffee. It's not really there yet. Uh, right. So let's just wait for the coffee to be made. We'll be with you in just a few seconds uh, to get started. To get started. I hear the coffee. I hear the coffee. <laughs> wow. Anyways, technical from a technical work uh, there we go and then I uh, just gonna Right, I'm just getting ready and need my morning coffee. I'm sorry for going all silent on you people. We are almost five minutes in and I still haven't got my first sip of, of coffee. But I will because I heard my, uh, my uh, coffee maker just make the sound i'll be right with you and we will get started and for those so just so we know what we're talking about uh, this is uh, the topic of the day uh, right right right
Okay. Good morning. Um, good, good, good morning. Um, let's get uh, let's get rid of this uh, for now. But um, let's get started a little bit. Um, so yesterday, I uh, started to talk a little bit about about uh, testing in JavaScript, uh, and pretty much got into a nice flow of figuring out, you know, what what testing is all about, and um, and so on. And I think that we got into uh, a fairly good discussion, and I pulled up this this image here that is kind of uh, can be confusing a little bit in the beginning, but it's it's a nice representation of how how testing can work in a specific uh, uh, workflow. But it also, in my opinion, demonstrates uh, in a fairly good way. Um, in a fairly good way, uh, the two different or two main ways or approaches to automated tests and what we exactly we are testing. And so we were talking about two, those two circles that you can see on this on this diagram. Uh, let me uh, let me just get rid of this in here. Uh, right. So we see two two circles, and each circle is divided into three parts, and those three parts are the same for both of them. Uh, they are colored, color red. And, uh, the second one is green, and the the third one is dotted. And the the red uh, part of the circle, one third of the circle, stands for uh, is is a is a part in time where you write your automated tests. Uh, and you have those tests go green, uh, go sorry, go red, and then uh, and the reason they are going red initially is because you write your implementation first before you even um, before. Oh God, I'm 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 really talking rubbish now. You write your test first before you even write your implementation, and that means that. Uh, that your tests will will fail initially until you start writing the right code to make them pass and initially when you when you start in the outer circle you test behavior that is very close to the user which basically means that you are testing user interface elements or or data or flows right and then after a while you can't really continue with the with the acceptance testing or end-to-end -end tests, whatever we call it, call it, the outer circle, but you have to go down to the unit level, which is like the, the very components of which your your application is being built from. And so you start to do that instead. And, uh, and that is the unit test uh, uh, approach. Uh, and then once you've got them up under control, you move up to uh, to the outer circle again, and you kind of continue this back and forward uh, jump between those two circles. That is the theory, at least, right? And so another thing that I, I spoke about yesterday was uh, this: uh, the three stages, uh, like three stages of 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 a test, right? Uh, uh, three three stages of. Uh, a test test case uh, right um, uh, yes so let's just uh, format this right uh, in those three stages there are generally a setup stage where you kind of, uh, you know, prepare your your case, your test case. You, you know, perhaps you create a few objects. Uh, 
you navigate to a to a page if it's uh, if it involves a user interface uh, approach here uh, you basically do set the stage for the test to be to be able to be run and then you interact with your function with your code one way or another uh, if it is a functional test like you test a, a, a function on a unit level you pers perhaps pass in some data and you ex uh, in, then you or if it's a if it's a usability test you perhaps click on a few buttons you you fill in some some uh, user forms or what have you and um, and the third step is of course to assert that whatever you wanted what uh, wanted to happen actually happens like if it's a unit test that the data that is being returned from the uh, from the from the function actually is what you wanted it to be and if it's a acceptance test then you should know whether um, uh, whether the outcome is actually the the desired outcome if the user gets to see whatever he came to to see or uh, and so on right uh, right so so yesterday we uh, tackled the unit test parts in this circle right so we I work with that and so today I want to work with acceptance test but just first we're gonna do a recap uh, that's gonna be the agenda for today actually or let's uh, let's create create just a, a, an agenda so we know what we're doing uh, uh, agenda so I'm reckoning that one uh, go over uh, yesterday findings Yesterday's that's not that's not a word, but we're gonna write right uh, fix this here. Go over yesterday's findings. Uh, update update uh, code plus readme, uh, and then well we can also uh, push uh, push 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 to GitHub. So we're gonna have that, and then. Uh, introduce road use Cypress IO that's that's basically what we're gonna do I don't think I need a, a more like a, a agenda agenda uh, but first of course is gonna be theory it's a really you know just just an overview and the second one will be do a small project or workshop workshop that's gonna be that I think that's that's enough uh, all right uh, let's go over yesterday's findings and get started with uh, so that's gonna be the unit test mocha chai thing uh, we actually found out some interesting uh, interesting things I had Mike from agile ventures join me yesterday uh, um, uh, live uh, actually you know in audio because we are usually setting up um, uh, a Google meet so if you want you know whoever is watching if you want to join in over Google meet that's this perfect uh, perfectly fine unless you you know as long as you promise to be nice uh, right so this is it here we are uh, I'm gonna move this one out of the way but this one is started now so it's possible to join in and let's have a look at, at yesterday's findings right uh, where am I here I am good stuff okay Right, so yesterday uh, we started to use um, we started to use um, Mocha and Chai to build our our tests. 
uh, and that was pretty interesting actually uh, the setup is minimal if you want to use mocha and chai for uh, for the purpose of unit testing that's actually not a very hard place no hard thing to do uh, it's it's pretty pretty neat uh, we can see here that we the only thing we have is uh, mocha dependency we have a chai dependency we have the sinon dependency and we also have something called sinon chai and the reason we have sinon chai is because we want to make sure that we can uh, uh, use uh, a little more advanced techniques like stubbing out mocking out functionality but also using something that is called spice so we introduced that then we found a fantastic little uh, extension to our um, to our uh, testing tool library that is called BDD lazy var and that is not really a uh, a good name for me you know the, the way I look at it but it does amazing things in my opinion uh, so let me just put this up here uh, and what BDD lazy for does might be a bit um, a bit advanced for some but it says also it, it provides a user interface user interface for testing frameworks uh, uh, right but that's also misleading you know in my opinion but who am I it's it's not my uh, it's not my uh, my package so uh, you know they can phrase the, their their explanations however however they can this is defined uh, it allows to define lazy variables and subjects in tests that's really uh, the, the the reason why I um, looked into this uh, <coughs> into this package um, and for an untrained eye this might seem like oh who gives a shit and I totally understand that and here sits the nerd that actually does care uh, so the reason I care is because when I was writing this test here the the test that is looking into the person object in our JavaScript uh, file or you know implementation code we had to work we have a, a, a few describe blocks here we take a look and le, let me just see how we how we structure our test we we uh, we're looking into the person class right and we want to have a subject like a, the 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 object that will be uh, what it's this entire test is all about right so we call that by default uh, subject because you have to store uh, an instance of something into a variable and you have to run your test against that so we call that subject okay so it, we need slightly different subjects for for uh, for different parts of the application because we are like modifying the the, not for the application for the test because we're modifying that that uh, object a, a little bit in order to assert if it if it uh, does what it's supposed to do now first in this first describe block I'm checking for the uh, property setters uh, that are properties on instance property setters so actually instance of person has property setters on its yeah property well I wouldn't say setters here actually it has properties on instantiations right so here I I have a test saying it is expected to be an instance of a person class it could be a little bit misleading actually but it, okay uh, now so the only thing we're checking here if it's an instance of a person 
and then we're playing around with with uh, a few one-liners which is also an addition by this pdd uh, lazy var um, applica uh, extension it allows us to write this kind of very neat one-liner tests uh, that are uh, gonna produce a nice output in in our test framework uh, and so on but nevertheless we are using different types of of uh, subjects in this case the subject that is defined on line 10 and uh, the one that will be used in this describe block will be uh, extended with these options uh, the first name last name and age uh, of this person and if we take a look at the next describe block we ex we do not extend this person with anything actually any options uh, and this class doesn't have any error handlers or anything like that so that's pretty pretty good for me because now i have a subject that is 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 uh, totally clear of of any set properties and i can set it myself and so on and in the next one the last one we also don't care about that uh, because we are setting this uh, automat, you know, um, we're testing the setters, uh, uh, and whether this uh, the full name is being combined, and so on and so forth, right? But this was a good good extension. Uh, the biggest takeaway here is that we set a, set up a spy. We found a use case, even if this in this very trivial uh, trivial example, we found a use case for for spies and uh, set that up using sign on which is uh nice that's uh that's a good example of how you can extend your testing framework to do more things and i left some comments here uh, in the code just to say what what's uh, going on and we are going green on this uh, on this thing and in order to understand the spy we basically have to watch yesterday's uh, stream or reach out to me and I will be doing uh, more sessions on on sign on actually because that's a very interesting interesting part um, anyway uh, if you look at the implementation that is um, in the source folder this person class is a uh, uh, it's a very simple simple thing and it is uh, it is a class it's a JavaScript class I don't necessarily have to write it as a class I could have have it as, a, as an object or whatever but uh, I have some functionality bound to that particular uh, particular thing and I'm exporting uh, this module export um, uh, thing thingy all right so that's it uh, let's just uh, hit this up uh, forget about this we have our git flow here uh, small uh, adds uh, no formats formats code during after after review with our talk flow Through review. Right there we go. Uh, right. Um, all changes. All this, and just push this up to uh, origin. Okay. All right. So now we can close this for a second or two, and we will talk about this one well actually I need to just save the link to this uh, to this thing so uh, let's just add a new slide here so I keep my notes in order order uh, and so I'm gonna say B B D D lazy var that would be this 
let's just do mocha uh, chai uh, sign on and just I'm gonna keep the links uh, sign on uh, chai right sign on chai right so mocha Mocha is this uh, right? So it's mockajs.org. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, so I'm just gonna add this here. Chai JS. I think it's Chai JS, right? Yeah, it's Chai JS.com. It's pretty straightforward. Um. Sign on Chai or sign on sign on is also sign on JS, I think. Sign on JS. Is it? Yeah, it's dot org actually. Okay, good stuff. And then we have the sign on Chai. Right. So it's sign on Chai is an extension to to Chai. With, uh, with neat um, matchers, which is good. Um, uh, to have should have to have been called with. Right, right. That's exactly what we're doing. Sorry. Um, just got a little bit carried away there right so these are the the things uh, we are using uh, for unit testing uh, unit testing whoops there we go uh, good stuff let's move on to Cyprus and Cyprus is easy peasy lemon squeezy uh, Cyprus is an assertion is, is a test runner for for uh, acceptance test or end-to-end -end tests and as they claim the web has evolved finally testing has to and I've been a great uh, great advocate for for Cyprus uh, when Cyprus was introduced I immediately kind of fell in love with it uh, and I am really happy that I found this this uh, this framework. It works extremely well. It's easy to run, and even if if uh, unit testing in JavaScript has been pretty rather straightforward, uh, testing user interfaces and web applications has not. And Cypress brings that to the table. And. Uh, it's really easy to set up and it's really, really easy to run and it's quite powerful, I would say. So let's dive into this and see if we can, you can get smarter. Now, uh, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will do what? Uh, I'm listening to a little bit of soothing music in the background. I hope that it's okay with you guys. Um, uh, right. Uh, everyone is fast asleep. I totally get it. It's 8.30 in the morning here where I am in Sweden. It is what it is. I'm just gonna keep on doing what I'm doing. The reason why I'm, I'm, I'm talking about all of this is because I'm preparing a few talks that I will be delivering um, in the context of a summer school that we will run as a charity project uh, uh, together with Agile Ventures and I need to get a good hang of this. I've been practicing test-driven development for a long while but sometimes you need a refresher on how to set up uh, your your environment and also how to talk about it and how to how to present this and so on. So. So that's what I'm trying to do now. Uh, I have um, uh, yesterday I created um, 
a folder here right it's called testing for workshops uh, so let's get into that and here I should have one basic unit testing okay so I'm gonna create a a new folder I'm gonna call it basic uh, acceptance testing uh, right yes we're gonna do that and we're gonna see the into this uh, testing oh sorry basic acceptance testing right and here I'm also gonna do yarn in it uh, and I'm gonna build a small little uh, web application so I will I will make sure that we uh, we call it something uh, I should have passed in the Y flag when I did yarn in it but it's okay so in order to to get uh, something up and about as a web page we want to uh, add um, a small web server and I'm gonna <coughs> go with the simplest one I'm gonna call this one I'm gonna use super static so uh, super static is a small web server at, that is perfectly fine with us you know to 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 get that up and running you know we don't have to to do anything else and uh, I'm just gonna MK I'm gonna create a folder uh, and I'm gonna call it uh, well I can call it source actually uh, and then oh shit uh, MK deal source sorry about that uh, and I'm gonna create an index uh, index HTML file here and I'm gonna pop this open in my code editor like this and I will just go to my index HTML create a very basic HTML uh, so, uh, page or document and we will say e2e demo and e2e stands for end to end which is what we call these tests end to end tests that's what we call them in in, in javascript world in in ruby world or rails world we would probably say acceptance tests but yeah it is what it is and so here we will just um, say h1 and we will say hello hello user uh, which isn't much for the world but nonetheless and here in our package JSON we want to add a script and the script will be start and you know to fire up the server and the start script will execute one command only and that will be the super static command and we will just point super static towards the SRC folder which is where our our page is and so pretty much with this setup we are good to go so we should be able to just say yarn start as a very first thing and it says that super static has been started and we can visit localhost 3474 to view your app okay so let's do that uh, we go to our browser and we go to localhost uh, 3474 that's the port and we see hello user here okay so we have that up and running and we will keep that server up and running here we can turn turn off this this uh, this page we can move this out of the way and this this uh, terminal can can be uh, can be run 
and the superstatic server can be uh, started that's perfectly fine uh, we will take a look at this from time to time just to make sure that everything works but other than that we will have this server up and running it's very important that we do keep this up and running because the way i will set up our our um, our acceptance tests will be a very simple setup i'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible uh, to make sure that that uh, and ha we have to make sure that cyprus has somewhere to go and so when we t tell cyprus that you were supposed to go to uh to uh um, to a page we need to give Cyprus a URL and that localhost 3474 will come into play when we do that. So we're gonna open this up now uh, and open up a, a terminal in our um, in our IDE. Remember to keep the the server up and running and we're gonna say yarn add Cyprus and that will install our dependency. Uh, Cyprus as a dependence and I'm actually gonna try to at attempt this to do, to do this uh, without reading documentation because I've done this a few times uh, so uh, you know doing this live on Twitch can can give me a, a, a chance to test my abilities or to make a total fool of myself now not a total fool I think I have it pretty much covered uh, but who knows right um, who knows? We'll see where we end up. Uh, uh, and we're installing things. And I'm just gonna constantly monitor my my memory because for some reason when I stream it has a tendency to 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 consume a lot of internal memory. And I have a piece of software that that helps me clear that up. So. Uh, right now we should be pretty good, but but it's uh, it's important to keep keep a track of, of uh, on this, right? So anyway, we install this, and we can see that we have two dependencies now, uh, Cypress and Superstatic. And I'll also just a disclaimer that when you do this for in in for a real project, you wouldn't add Cypress the way I just added it as a dependency. You would add this as a development dependency. So that, for demo purposes, it doesn't matter, but for real purposes, it it will. And when we do, uh, when we do the the next part of our series, whether it's today or tomorrow or whatever, which would be the so uh, right now we're doing we're doing this uh, this one right, but when we do the full BDD flow, uh, I will not make you know things like that I want to use things you know the way they are supposed to be used but again I'm just in demo mode at the moment so I don't really really care whether we follow every single uh, best practice I can talk about it I can mention it uh, so you know but uh, but we should be okay with with going with this at the moment all right so we have it installed okay so uh, the next thing we want to do is to add a script. I'm really, I'm doing this out of my head a bit of while. I want to add a script and I want to say, uh, I want to call this one, for instance, CI open. I think that's, that's what we what what uh, you can see in some in some tutorials or documentation or walkthroughs or what have you right and that would be a command that is that says cypress open and there are two ways of running cypress <coughs> sorry woof and i will focus on one of them today but it's important that you know that there are two and the first one, the one that I will be go, uh, using today, is uh, the way where we actually open a browser uh, to interact, to see our test being executed. So we will open a browser, we will execute our test, all the interactions will happen in that browser, and also there will be like a, like a panel uh, show, telling us if, if our tests pass or if they failed. 
uh, and that's a very good thing it's a powerful tool for working with uh, front-end applications when when as a, as, a, as a programmer or even a designer because you get to see everything live and so on but there's another way to run Cypress and that is without that interface so uh, that pretty much executes all codes all um, tests in in your terminal uh, in this in the CLI um, without an interface without a browser and uh, that is pretty useful when you uh, don't want to see everything of course it, it could be a little bit faster actually it's, it's we, we use sometimes refer to this as running your tests in a headless state and when we say headless it, it or headless mode rather uh, uh, we um, uh, it, it means that it doesn't show on on, 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 on the screen what we are doing uh, with a browser when we, this is refers to a to to end-to-end -to -end testing or acceptance testing only but today we will run uh, Cypress open uh, because that will open up um, um, a browser for us right so we did two steps apart from me talking constantly uh, we did two things we we added Cypress as a dependency and we added this script and now we will run this script um, because it's important that we run it at least once initially even before we start type writing um, writing any any tests and you will see why in just a second so if we do yarn uh, CI open and I'm using yarn you can you can of course use NPM with this if you if you want uh, that's perfectly fine uh, and so when you run it for the first time you will go through a, a verification process uh, and in my case it says it looks like this is your first time using Cypress 710. So they are uh, in a new release uh, that is called, you know, uh, they, they uh, dropped, well, they moved into uh, uh, the seventh release of Cypress. Not really sure why they're making such a big jumps. Just six, seven months ago, they were in, in release five. Uh, but how, who, who am I to, to judge? And it, it's opening Cypress. And what happens on my other screen, you will see that in just a second, because I will uh, move it over, is that you see this interface. Uh, right. Uh, let's see if we can make this a little bigger for you. Right. So, and these these people are very nice. You know, I, I really like people at, at uh, over there at Cypress. You know, because they, they put, put this out, uh, this... Uh, this thing together for us to help us get started uh, and that is to add a few folders and examples tests to our project and um, and we will take a look at them uh, just briefly um, this stream or this walkthrough is not about you know diving super do deep into the various possibilities of, of Cypress but uh, still we, we we will go over this uh, a little bit so okay let's click okay I got it you can see those tests here and just for um, um, to you know introduce you guys to this I will choose one of the test cases that they they created for us automatically and actually run it so I'm gonna use the one that is called viewport spec and click on it and this will open up the test runner and it will run through all the tests uh, like this and I can rerun this because I assume this went a bit quick and this this test is about testing the different uh, viewport sizes of, uh, uh, of, of of Cypress that is uh, what is possible or not right so you can see here that everything is going green you have this this panel here with all the all the tests that are being executed uh, and send, then you have the main main page here that actually shows the interface you know and here we can see that if we hover over the different parts of the tests that has been executed you can actually see the output so here in this particular test they are uh, showing this website 
on a MacBook 15 and a MacBook 13, which is slightly different, right? MacBook 11, then you have an iPad 2, uh, iPad mini, you have an iPhone 6 plus 6, uh, iPhone 4, very small, uh, iPhone 4, 4 had a very small uh, screen, I guess, iPhone 3, iPod, iPad 2 portrait, and iPhone 4 landscape. So, apparently, what you can do is to, to execute your, your tests on different devices, should you want to do that. This is just an example uh, of what, what things look like uh, here. Anyway, navigating in the Cypress Runner can be a bit confusing, so I just want to go through this here with all this, with this, this, uh, this arrow, circled arrow, you can rerun all your tests. Uh, you can see the time as, that has been executed. You can uh, have an indicator of how many tests actually passed and how many were uh, were failing. And then you can navigate back to that to this uh, view, uh, and you can uh, run some other some other tests here if you want. Uh, and again. Uh, this 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 particular example was about spy stubs and clocks and so on, but there is another feature here that is really really important to understand that uh, where you are and what you have to your disposal, and that is that you have your developer tools, right? Uh, and since you have your developer tools, then you are pretty much set to do all sort of interesting things like debugging, like checking out code, really doing console logging or uh, seeing, taking a, a, a closer peek on what your HTML really looks like, setting breakpoints and here in DevTools or in your code and so on. This is truly powerful, truly powerful. All right, enough talking. Let's get after this. Uh, we're going to go back to this this interface. I'm going to stop these these tests now. It pretty much kills that that uh, uh, the test runner. Uh, the interesting part, just a small detail that I really want to emphasize is that you have your are uh, you running your tests in your Chrome browser? This is the best uh, best browser in my opinion to to use when you develop and I know this is a controversial statement, so uh, let's not kill each other over that. Um, for many reasons, I think Chrome has the best dev tools and, and so on. Uh, I do uh, respect people that have a different opinion, of course. So if you do, you know, that's, that's perfectly fine. Don't worry about that. Uh, now, you can switch this to use Electron if you want and that is also uh, totally fine this it will look slightly different but not much different uh, it's just a different it, it's a different browser and you still have your your uh, development the developer tools available to you and so on so uh, I I really rarely switch to Electron not really sure why but uh, not 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 super uh interested in why they have electron um but hey that's the way it is i just wanted to mention this that this is p totally possible now another thing that i just run is the example uh code for the network request specs again examples but very useful examples because you can take a closer look on why on how things are uh, gonna get down when you are making api calls and so on and in almost all applications today you need to um, you need to make uh, calls to to um, to a to external apis um, because that's the that's the way it is you know uh, right, so um, let's end this for now, stop this, kill this, keep the server running, the application needs to run because we will write our first test. 
uh, <coughs> sorry. And what will we run? Well, first of all, you can see that we have a new Cypress folder. Inside of that folder, we have four different subfolders. We're going to go over them later. But the one that comes into play now is the integration folder. And in that integration folder, you have the examples that I was just talking about. What we want to do is to right click on the examples or what I want to do to right click on it and delete that uh, that folder. I don't need it for anything. Boom, gone. And it's going to be time to write our first spec. And so I'm going to create a new file and what comes now is of course my ideas on how to to run those tests uh, you can have other ideas and that's perfectly perfectly fine uh, it's my stream it's opinionated you know uh, anyway I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call this file user can see welcome message and I say I use uh, um, camel case when I name my my test files and camel case is lower letter first and then subsequently uh, we don't separate new words but we we use uppercase letters for new words the user can see welcome message and then I say dot feature dot js and I got a little bit of a cold sorry about that uh, user can see welcome message dot feature js that's what I call my my test case and why do I use the word feature because I like it it's a feature and not spec so uh, you know some people are using test some people are using spec some people are using feature for acceptance test I use feature that's what I use. So here I want to have a describe block and this is exactly the same type of describe block that we have uh, in in uh, unit testing, Mokachai, whatever, right? And so I say user can see uh, can see welcome message. Well, no. Not really. I'm going to say this instead. Uh, user user navigates to uh, to uh, application application page uh, applications root page or page or something like that, right? And then we're going to create a before block to start with, and the before block that should pop up here. There we go. Before block will be to navigate to the page, right? So I'm going to say ci dot visit, and I will visit HTTP, right? Localhost, and it was thirty four seventy four, right? Remember we had that one up and running. So localhost thirty four seventy four. Uh, that will be our uh, main destination first and then I will add an it block and the it block will say is expected uh, user that navigates that navigates to application page is expected to see welcome message welcome message and I will say uh, I know that I wrote an h1 I used the h1 tag for this so I can say ci dot get uh, just an h1 right and then I can say as and no not as uh, we can just run an assertion on this should and I can say contain text and as a second argument, I will say welcome. Hello, hello user, right? That's, is that what I said? Hello user? 
Uh, I think so. Hello, user. Perhaps I had an exclamation mark. I can't remember. Okay. So this one is pretty straightforward. The only different, the only thing that it doesn't feel really natural is that you have to pre prefix all commands with C Y, uh, and you can chain commands. That's also good. That's that's very very usual. So what we're doing here is that we're navigating to localhost, and then we're grabbing the H1 that is present on the screen, and we are just running an assertion that this H1 should contain contain text hello user okay so let's run our command again uh, if you look at my terminal I will now execute the CI open command uh, and that will will start this runner again and you can see the new file I've removed all the other example files right and we can see user can see welcome message feature and we're gonna start this one and it says hello user and our assertion is going green so that is as straightforward as it can get it can't get any simpler than that people and we are pretty much set up this is the the lowest 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 hanging fruit I can do for you guys um, you know there isn't much much else to to do at least to get the first test up and running but we can take a look at some other uh, small caveats here right so for instance we don't necessarily want to type out this this URL every time it would be enough if we uh, if we could do this, just, just visit the, the base path of the of the of the application. So, in order to be able to do this kind of things, we would we would have to go into our Cypress JSON file, uh, which is just an a J, you know, it's just an object, a JSON object. And here I can add a. Um, uh, um, a setting a key called base URL and I would set that to localhost 3474 but then there is another one that is called I think it's called the Chrome Web Security uh, let me just actually I need to check that you know I'm not 100% sure I think it's Chrome Web Security but I don't uh, uh, I don't know, Chrome Web Sec U R T Cypress. Right. Web Security. Uh, where's the setting? Come on. Right, set cross web security to false. So, exactly, uh, that's what I want to do. So I want to set Chrome Web Security, and I just want to say false here. And that is uh, a shorthand for basically allowing us to to uh, communicate with external servers and 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 just bypassing a lot of these course issues that we will have. You don't always want to do this. So I would definitely say that uh, you you need to read through this this section of the Cypress documentation if you are uh, into actually testing your application in as real life uh, setting as possible. But f you know, very often I I don't I don't really care about that during the first pay like first part of my development process I just want to get going and I can disable this um, and that's perfectly fine to do uh, to do that uh, <clears throat> so we we uh, disable this for now and we set this base URL in our Cypress JSON and uh, this of course crashed um, 
while doing this uh, our our test runner crashed and i don't think i have it no i don't have it open anymore because it disappeared so i should be able to just run ci open again and we should be all good of that pretty okay hello user all right so i'm gonna take a bit of a break uh, uh, let's see if we can take the opportunity take the opportunity and actually run uh, uh, some 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 tests so some uh, not tests but rather um, uh, like a, what, what is it called like an ad or something right uh, I need to refill my coffee and stretch my legs I've been at it for an hour now so um, I really need to just take a, take a, a short short break uh, no we can't run a chat yet but that's okay uh, let's just uh, figure things out in a different way uh, so what we're talking about today is of course uh, the uh, some some testing strategies uh, and we are in the process of running our uh, our specs here what happened to my pages oh there they are right uh, so we are talking unit testing and acceptance testing uh, as a whole but today we're focusing on the acceptance test uh, flow so let's uh, let's get into that a little bit more in just a few minutes after my coffee has been coffee cup has been re refilled with fresh java uh, in the meantime you can listen to uh, Percussion randomness tabla fusion. I don't know. Uh, let's get head over to this one. All right, be right back, folks.
All right. So let's see if we can get this get this show a little more into some more actions. Sorry. <laughs> right. Uh, new coffee, and all is is good. I'm back. Unit test, acceptance test. Uh, we are focusing on the acceptance test part. Uh, let's see if we're if we can get any smarter. Uh, what I did now was to basically go over the setup of acceptance tests. Um, so um, what I did now was to. Uh, to, uh, you know, uh, one, go over documentation, uh, over documentation, uh, which is like, you know, really briefly, uh, not much, it, there's not much to go over, you can just dive into this and then feel your way through this, uh, right, but anyway, I'm gonna just include the, the, uh, the, uh, the the URL here, you know, uh, uh, do you know if you have a small project already, then you need to do a basic setup, basic uh, setup of of Cyprus, and then if you know, like take a take a peek, take a peek at included examples and write your first test. Right. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter just just so because I so, I so 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 it's all clear. It doesn't matter what you are building your application in. I was apparently doing a very static website using HTML, only HTML. But it doesn't matter if you use React, if you use Vue, if you use anything else that is that renders uh, a, a web page. If it's like a full stack Python, you know, like a Django app, or if you if you use um, Rails or or what have you, .NET, what have you, it doesn't really matter. Cypress doesn't care about what technology you are using underneath the hood. It is just a uh, uh, tool to interact with your with your application once it has been started and uh, and r is live in a browser or can be accessed in by a browser so it's really tech agnostic it doesn't really care um, and it's it's worth thinking about that because quite often when you read walkthroughs or you know you do some tutorials or online courses or whatever you do the 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 instructor often t you know connects the um, the testing framework very tightly with the uh, with the um, um, with the framework or library he or she is using to build their their app and and it, it's it's perfectly fine you know that's it's very often the case but in the case of 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 Cypress you you uh, have to know that there are no connections like that and what I just did now is, is to set up a very basic Cypress config right it's it really doesn't matter uh, how you do it in terms of, of of installation and anything like that but there might be some caveats here like you might see for instance an error message or a, a warning underneath the CY when you set this up and there are f ways to fix that of course as with everything else in life uh, and there are other things that could potentially go go uh, go wrong uh, um, in your in your setup but let's see if we can uh, extend this a little bit right uh, let's say let's see if we can interact with some um, um, with a form that that could be that's a very common use case right uh, you uh, 
you have some data that needs to be sent off or what have you, right? So I'm gonna and I'm gonna test drive this a little bit now because so the first example that I did was to to basically uh, test for something that is already there. I coded this H1 with hello user uh, as the first thing I did. Now I want to actually add something to my application and I want to drive this using uh, using tests uh, uh, in Cypress. So tag along. Uh, new feature request, new ticket. I, I'm picking something up and the ticket is uh, user can fill out a form user can fill out uh, let's call it registration form right form right so I'm gonna just follow my own uh, my own standard so I'm gonna call this feature dot JS right user can fill out a registration form dot feature right uh, describe uh, uh, and we can say we will we will add a form, but we will of course not register the user. Uh, but uh, user, and we can say user that fills in a registration form. Uh, and then I'm going to add another describe block here with valid with valid uh, information or data or information and then i will say and it is expected to see a, a confirmation message for instance right and you think about this like this is my TDD flow, flow, right? I am building a kind of scenario. Usually, I have a user story um, attached to my to my feature request, right? I'm really cherry picking things from from the flow. This is a walkthrough, a, a demo, or workshop, right? So, so this is not the entire flow. But I can just tell you that usually you have some sort of a, a, a backlog or a product backlog, and you're cherry pick. You're, you're picking the the not cherry picking, but rather you're picking the, the, the feature on top of that of that uh, wish list. And in this case, we are just pretending that uh, we are starting to build uh, a registration flow, for, for instance, and our objective is to accept the data and show tell the guy or girl that is, 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 uh, is registering with us that thank you very much for registering, right? So I'm trying to build this this story it's all about telling a story in my opinion right i don't want to get too philosophical here but but in your test cases you want to you want to check out or take a closer peek at different scenarios and the first scenario i want to do here is that the the happy one the the one where the user actually gets to see that that welcome message or confirmation message uh, there are of course other scenarios where he fails to provide valid data and so on uh, but that should come next that should come with with as the second second step in this first step i'm saying a user that fills in a registration form with valid information is expected to see a confirmation message this is in my opinion as good as it gets uh, for now at least you can definitely have opinions whether the english uh, sentences are are properly built or not but uh, let's let's go with that one for now okay so let's let's start from what is it that he wants to see and where should he see it right and so we have our page let's say that we want to give this guy a uh, or or add a, um, a place for the message right so let's say that we would just say get sorry ci dot get uh wow crypto that's not what i want ci dot get there you go and we want to get um um like a div or or something that has an id let's because you know you can give your your uh, node html nodes ids so let's start with that so 
to type this up in in um, in Cypress you could use hard brackets and you say ID equals and then let's call it confer confirmation message right right I will actually create a node with this particular ID later not yet because we're test driving this and we will say uh, we will run an assertion on this so we we'll say should uh, and then we will say contain text and it will be say thank you for thank you for registering for for signing up signing up and exclamation marks let's let's just go with a very low thing here so we would say uh, that see I get confirmation message uh, should contain this text right we know that before we actually get into something like we need to navigate to the application right so we go, we're going to add a before block and we're just going to say ci dot get uh, sorry visit visit and now we have the base here where I'll already set up so we can just do a uh, root path here right uh, and this will of course fail so there's no re no reason to even run this yet uh, but we can take a look take a small peek let's get out of this uh, and we go back to tests and you can see user can fill out registration form right and it just says hello user there's nothing here there's no ID uh, no no node with that particular ID as I said this would definitely fail for us right but let's think about this even more right so we want to f to execute this this you know not you know the user navigating to the web page uh, should be done uh, at the very top at the very beginning of course right but then we want to to fill out that that form so I'm gonna create a new before block here and I will say something like uh, I, I will start to pretend to interact with my with my uh, um, with my page with my application so I will say something like this uh, see I get and I will say that this is like a section uh, a section there is actually a um, uh, an HTML tag that is called section right uh, so okay so we can do a CI section and then we will give this one an ID uh, equals uh, registration we can just gonna call it registration form registration form uh, no just registration actually right and then we're gonna say dot within and then uh, something of a callback like this and I would say CI CI dot get and this time I want I'm looking for an input and the input will have an ID of uh, name and we're going to type Thomas uh, and then I will just copy this one and I will say input input it here and this ID would be email and I will type uh, Thomas at uh, agileventures.org which is actually my email address if you want to hook me up with something just go ahead all right uh, and then I want to say see I get input and then ed id submit submit form and I just want to click on this and not type anything right click and like this okay so we want to get into a section that is called registration and we want to get actually we're not going to use section on the second thought I can use form it's gonna be an HTML form and I want to interact with it somehow yeah okay and then that will fail why would it fail because there is no such thing as a, as a form with an ID of registration okay so that's the failing 
uh, a failing test. It's, a f it's, it's our message. It's an assertion error with an error message uh, and we need to do something about that. So now we have our test case written kind of okay-ish, you know, that's at least the first iteration of this. We can go to our index HTML and I can do a form and I can give this uh, an ID of registration uh, and we will continuously run our registration registration no 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 right it did find this now I just had to rerun this now we need to find an input with ID name okay so we're gonna f add that and I'm gonna say input input text uh, like this and I'm going to give it an, uh, uh, an an ID and then we're going to use name and I'm actually going to remove all of the other stuff uh, and let's see what that does for us it did find that and it, it filled in Thomas awesome now he's failing on finding the the input uh, that has an ID of email so we're just gonna add that and note that I'm just using the bare minimum here uh, in order to make this pass okay good and now he wants to find an input with an ID submit form well then I'm just gonna say input submit and the value will be just uh, register register and then I'm gonna give this an ID of submit right and we're gonna run this and it's called uh, submit form and not submit so mea culpa submit form right let's run it again Regis, right and he did click on it and now he's looking for a confirmation me confirmation message and we do not have that of course so I'm gonna go out from the form and I'm gonna say div uh, with an ID of confirmation message uh, and that will Uh, it finds the confirmation message, but it doesn't find the text. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so I'm gonna add a little bit of JavaScript directly here in this uh, in this uh, in this HTML. This is just a demo, so in regular development I wouldn't probably do that. Uh, but here I can do it. No drama. Uh, right um, so let's see if we can add an observable well add an event listener to this um, uh, to this form so I'm gonna say document um, document uh, get event list set uh, no uh, add event listener and the first event listener I want to add is the DOM content content loaded DOM content Thomas content content loaded and we will just have a callback here and then we will say um, let our const form equals document uh, get element by ID and that ID would be registration registration sorry registration uh, and then form add event listener and the event we will listen for is to submit 
uh, and the callback would be uh, something like this. We're going to execute some code here, but we want to say const a message a node would be the uh, document get element by ID and the ID we're looking for is the confirmation confirmation message uh, thing and so whenever we submit this we can say uh, message message node inner inner text would be set to uh, what was it uh, it was uh, thank you for signing up right um, right uh, name email submit register 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 right there we go right so we should in principle let's see no uh, we does it, it doesn't work because we are reloading the page so we need to say um, uh, we need to say uh, form prevent default then uh, default uh, can we do that yeah we can do that no uh, how do I prevent it from uh, right uh, wow uh, prevent uh, I thought it was uh, shit do I have to to check it out how do I prevent default from a uh, right I need to prevent this one from being submitted why uh, yeah form prevent default how do I do that prevent default event method event function oh yeah okay okay so all right so I just do this uh, no uh, not this one but this one right so I'm just gonna go event and we just say event prevent default I think right right let's see yes exactly so we just needed to stop him from 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 this its defi default uh, behavior dream traveling stress which yeah how are you doing um, hope you're fine uh, right so now we are going green on this particular one doesn't look pretty you know but it is what it is um, let's uh, say good morning to chat and just bring you up to speed with what we're doing we are well I am we are I am uh, I am talking, you're listening. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm talking testing, right? So I'm talking unit tests and acceptance tests to uh, different approaches to, to testing different parts of, of your application. Yesterday, I was covering uh, the unit test part. Today, I am covering the acceptance test part. And later on today, or even in this stream, we will be covering uh, the full BDD or and test uh, behavior driven design and test driven development flow where we will be combining the acceptance tests and unit tests uh, together to kind of mimic this this entire flow of acceptance tests red green refactor stages and then unit test red green red green refactor uh, so this is as fun as it's going to get uh, if you're into developing web-based applications then perhaps this might be useful to you and if not you can just stick around and see some coding being done I don't know um, but anyway nice to have you guys with me and you feel if you feel like uh, introducing yourself in chat and sharing your experiencing with coding testing what have you or if you just want to say hi that's perfectly okay 
anyway uh, we are of course not uh, signing up this user for anything this is just uh, uh, some demo code but I think what we can uh, what we see come across is that by writing a test like this sitting down and thinking what do I want to do building a scenario user that fills in a registration form with valid information is expected to see a confirmation message right and then filling this in with uh, with some commands for to for the test framework to actually interact with uh, with your with your uh, application and then continuously running the these these tests uh, then you you can get into a, a nice flow you know where where you gradually interact in, iteratively add functionality to your to your uh, uh, to your web page or to your web application that's the theory um, and if you think about this thing that I mentioned let's see if we can get this side by side uh, uh, let's see let's move this out and we have this presentation here right so if we think about the three stages of a test case that I put, uh, spoke about earlier and I will talk about it again. The, it's usually like a setup, interact, assert, right? These are the th three things. You want to set the stage for your test, you want to do something, and you want to make sure that whatever you want it to do is actually being being uh, uh, performed. So that's the assert part. So in this case, the setup would be this. We are visiting the page. That's the setup part very straightforward nothing nothing extraordinary uh, sometimes there might be more setup that needs to be done but in this case very basic very low-hanging fruit we are just visiting the page that's that's stage one uh, so we can add this like stage st or step one uh, setup right and then we want to interact with the thing so we will just do this step to interact and how do we interact well we grab the form and we interact with the form itself that's the interact part uh, and then we need to uh, assert and so that would be this uh, step three assert assertion assert so we do the setup we interact with our application and you know by clicking on this button here we want to assert that we get this message out uh, and of course very simple very basic not not uh, much happening here but we are following those those three steps and that's uh, that's how a good test case should should be built now sometimes I see uh, these assertions not being really present for some reason or written in a real weird way um, but to be honest this is this is the anatomy of uh, of a test if you have any questions on that just feel free to to ask and if we take a look at the runner itself uh, it gives us a pretty neat uh, pretty neat um, output user that fills in a registration form with a, with valid information is expected to see a confirmation message and again if we open this up we can see the different stages of how cyprus is interacting with this guy we just slow slowly hover over the the uh, this different steps and we can see that it fills in uh, with the relevant information and runs an assertion good stuff Let's see if we can add some more. Uh, that's not the one. Uh, let's close this one. Let's see if we can add some more stuff to this. Uh, uh, that could be interesting. Uh, right. Uh, 
so what if the user doesn't fill in the the right information right so we can definitely um, uh, well before we we do that let's say that we want to add another feature that where we actually like hide the 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 uh, the form or just just so that we can pretend that we are uh, we are uh, uh, sending this off you know how it is in in, in a web-based application you send something off you get the message back but the form is no longer is no longer uh, visible right so we could say that um, it let's say hides is expected expected to to uh, to hide hide the the registration form form right and so we would get this we would say ci dot get um, the 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 form again uh, oh sorry form uh, id equals registration uh, and we say should should and we will say not be visible should not be visible once we have submitted this we should hide the registration form uh, that's a matcher that uh, exists in um, in uh, uh, in Cyprus I think uh, we'll be figuring this out soon if it doesn't it should be there I mean it should exist uh, right so let's see if this will fail for us of course it will because we haven't uh, we haven't set that up yet so we see the confirmation message that is going green but we see that uh, we try to assert that form registration should not be visible and uh, it is visible so our test is failing so let's see if we can change that behavior so we go to our JavaScript and we will just say form style visible um, sets to none in JavaScript I don't write much JavaScript like vanilla JavaScript but I think this is how you do it form style visible none yeah let's see no that wasn't that okay so now that we <coughs> are running into some issues it's a good way to to uh, set a debugger here right your ability to halt the execution of your code is imperative in all cases when you you know in all stages of development and in any environment and in your test environment uh, likewise so we want to st um, stop the execution of our code but in order to do that we need to open our developer tools and that's where this functionality the, the reason why we're running this in the browser in the first place comes in because apart from the visual part where we can actually see what's going on it is also good for us to be able to pop up our dev tools and for the debugger to kick in the dev tools needs to be open right so let's run this again and look at this we are halting the execution uh, where's my where's my sources no frame for a given ID was found what uh, snippets right really so let's see event event is this is that's the submit event let me make this a little bigger for you perhaps I don't know if you want to see this and the form do we have the form form is registration and so form style right and visible 
this table equals visible undefined oh really visibility is visible isn't it called visible I thought it was called visible uh, right uh, let's see uh, HTML visible let's see style visibility oh it's called visibility oh oh right okay it's called visibility it's not visible it's right so if I just say this set this to none can I set this to none no well first of all you have to f finish the no can I say hidden right hidden it is okay good now we know so debugging trying shit out in your console learn a little bit or refresh your memory I knew this I should have known this it's embarrassing no it's not embarrassing you know you you know there's so much shit you need to hold in your head sometimes that it's totally okay to forget uh, how to toggle visibility of an HTML uh, uh, node I think and if you want to hang me for it hang me for it it's okay no drama uh, let's just take this code uh, update our visible none well, visibility hidden right and so we're gonna release this now it will release with the blue button and now when I run my test we can see that the form magically disappears when we submit this fantastic information let's run it again just because I want to <sighs> see the reap the benefits of my work I was about to say awesomeness but you can't really say that you're awesome if you manage to hide a form forget about it anyway um, so that's uh, that's that right we wrote a little bit of of JavaScript here but more importantly we got uh, our test to pass we got our test to pass people green is good Gordon Gecko said greed is good in in Wall Street a you know, movie from the 80s I don't know uh, but I say green is good and when I mean green I don't mean money I mean green tests uh, so here is our our uh, uh, our test we are displaying a confirmation message to the user and we are hiding the registration form uh, so we could say something like instead of is expected is not expected to see to see the registration form right I think that is perhaps a better way to formulate this this is always a, a struggle to to write good uh, good messages um, and I would say that it's so weird because you know it's it's it might seem like the least important thing how to to write those uh, but in my opinion you know this should make sense when you read them out in the runner anyways let's uh, continue our struggle with another describe block let's say that he fails to let's say that he fails to submit um, uh, like he tries to click on the button before he uh, he or he clicks the button before he f fills in like email or something like that right so uh, so we're gonna create a new describe block and we will call it with invalid without well, oh, okay with invalid with invalid is that even a word invalid I think it is a word right invalid information right uh, so we will add another uh, you know there's another step here uh, that will be the uh, a repetition of of the interact and we will say before we'll cre create a before block in this particular for some reason I need to have like a like a space in between uh, 
Right. Uh, right. So so I need another before block. Um, and uh, so let's add it before. And we will again get this uh, form ID registration. Oh, sorry, get. ID equals registration. And again, within that thing, within that thing, we will have uh, another call back here. Uh, and we will um actually copy this like 11 12 and 13 uh, no need to write everything and we will not type in Thomas right and then I will see I will actually copy this step three here outside of the before block and I will say you need to you need to to fill out, fill in your name. And this should be still visible to see that. Right. Right. So this is a, a test case as good as any. If we fail to input the name here, we should get another message. You need to fill in your name and the form should be still visible. And so I'm going to say that I want to run only this one at this stage. And this is very common that whenever you start to expand your test and you uh, add new describe blocks and you hit blocks and you know to which is which are basically test cases, you want to uh, uh, to limit the, your runner to just run that particular part of your tests, so you can focus on on getting that functionality in place. And once you are done with that you want to run the entire test case and then the entire test suit uh, just to make sure that everything is is actually working so we're going to focus on this particular one i'm going to collapse this this block and we will take a look what the at the things uh, type cannot accept an empty string so we can't do that so we're just gonna remove this one uh, Cypress does not accept empty strings. Okay, didn't know that. And we are failing because we are still submitting, you know, quote unquote, this form. And that's not the desirable de de behavior. And we are failing on that. And we're also failing on the fact that the, the, the form is actually being hidden and it shouldn't be hidden. So let's see if we can make that happen. Uh, oh, sorry. There we are. Right. So we go over to our index HTML, which also holds our JavaScript. Uh, not very sexy in any way, because this is just a workshop. It's not real development. I wouldn't write this in in JavaScript like that. And if I would, I would probably you know extract that to a separate file and follow all the. The, the principles of, of development that you should uh, follow at any time. But, let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, so I want to uh, take a look. How can we, how can I, how can I know if this, f is this, if this form element actually has uh, value in it or not um, there w there are multiple ways to go about this uh, uh, in order to get this thing off the ground I'm, I'm just gonna set up debugger here I use debuggers extensively in my coding uh, oh sorry so I will open up my dev tools and I I'm gonna hit the debugger here and I'm gonna uh, just take a look at the form, form, right? Okay, so that's the registration form. And can I 
take a look at the children or elements or is it children uh, child element count we have children here and children are those input fields right uh, can we say do, do they have names right name no uh, input the ID name okay that's the one and we can say value does it have a value and value is empty okay so I can use that part so I can have uh, uh, I can have um, bup, 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 bup. Uh, right I could basically write a, f a, um, uh, um, a conditional so we could say something like this in our code uh, that if 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 uh, this one value is uh, is uh, an empty string right then we say uh, that the message node inner eight inner text should be what what was it we said you need to fill in a name okay so let's do that uh, right um, and then we just do else and we just move this code into the else block like this and we should be good on that particular particular um, test case I guess let's check it out uh, so let's run this again and we are going green on this you need to fill in a name let's do this again right okie dokie so that's good let's write another test case then now that we know that this one is going green uh, we will um, we will add another we will basically just do a describe block here uh, we will just describe uh, within value missing missing name and then we're just gonna move all of this stuff inside here and then just for the sake of it we can uh, copy this one and we can say missing email and then we will actually say we fill in the name with Thomas but we do not fill in uh, the email with anything and so we will say email uh, you need to fill in your your uh, email right so now we're just gonna move this describe block here into this only here sorry into this one and run it can we run it uh, right wah, 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 wah. oh shoots there we go had one one too many you know you have to be very careful when you copy and paste your own code you should never copy somebody else's code but you could copy your own code that's okay but you should be careful and I wasn't careful enough on this one right we're running into issues because it still thinks that we pass in valid data and it in it submits submits it you know again we're just faking it but anyway so we just gonna have to modify this uh, thing um, bum 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 uh, modify 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 and bum 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 we need to put on uh, well the the lowest lowest hanging fruit here will be uh, 
else if and this is gonna be a, some shitty code uh, but nonetheless nonetheless sorry uh, we're just gonna do if email uh, and then we will just set this text to you need to fill in your email uh, and yes this sucks big time um, but I think it will make our test pass no whoa or what the f what did I form 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 oh form here we go form there you go uh right let's see if this passes now yes this one passes now okay so now we will go over to our to our test and just run the whole thing right and now we have something uh, failing for us and what is that missing name right and what is failing what is failing this is a very common thing because you you focus on just running your own tests uh, uh, all in all and what we are running into now is that is the place where we find wh where we do this this before right so we are visiting this one and we are not revisiting them after each test so i think a fix could be before each instead of before uh, let's see if that helps no it did not help uh, so we will copy this and now we just want to uh, how do I so do I need to uh, basically copy this in so I can I can comment this one out and add this see I visit into each before block here let's see if that will help us yeah that did help us um, right and we're going green on all the the tests at the moment um, so that's nice I guess however I'm not really happy with the with the setup uh, now this I was hoping that we want we would be able to to keep this out from those those blocks here um, let's see if we can do uh, keep this before before each and can I say after after can I revisit this thing then so we reload the whole thing always no that didn't fly at all right so perhaps we actually need to to have this CI visit I there is probably a fix for this but but I don't really care for for fixing that at the moment so we need to get this this visit thing into each of the before blocks not really happy with that but uh, so we are basically combining step one and step two into each well let's just do this uh, like this step one is the interaction so this would be the interaction and this would be the setup right uh, so let's let's just change that like this so we have that uh, properly properly set up 
for 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 the sake of the uh, of the walkthrough or demo or workshop or whatever we want to call this okay uh, so that was pretty much it what what I hope I may come across is that you can use your end-to-end -end tests but to to kind of test drive your your development even if this was a very simple uh, simple example and I'm leaving out the third step which is the refactoring step uh, but uh, initially I just wrote the happy path which makes the 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 test pass then we introduced uh, some uh, some other perspectives in this case having the user miss out on filling in uh, some information and again the error handler or the, the validation handler is very crude very basic uh, not not very cool uh, in any way but it's just a, a way for me to demonstrate what is supposed to happen and what's what's kind of what how we can use this uh, uh, so um, test drive your stuff add more complexity make sure you you uh, you add more more functionality as you go uh, forward with your with your tests adding adding more more uh, uh, more f functionality to it and so on right so that's pretty much what 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 it, what it's all about to be honest and the 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 rest of the you know the of the stuff that can be added or not added <laughs> it's it's up totally up to you um and um you know uh it is what it what it is basically it is what it is uh right uh let's see if we uh, if we can pull up this uh this diagram again where's my diagram there it is right so again in this session i was going through the outer uh, outer circle which is the acceptance test i wrote the test it was red going red for me then i wrote some implementation and it started to go green then i started to add more complexity wrote, wrote another test it was going red for me and i added some some implementation code and it started to go green again what i did not do is the third part of that circle which is the refactor refactoring part and if you take a closer look at this uh, um, um, if you take a closer look at my code you can definitely, and I, th I think all of you can agree with that. This, this, uh, this part of this code is really blah, not cool at all. It could be much, much better, but I, again, uh, it works, and I stay out of the refactoring part. It is what it is. Uh, we don't have to worry about about that. Um, so let's see if we can make sure that this code is pushed up i will actually stop the server which has been running in the background uh, at all times uh, uh, i will stop it now which means that if i would run my my tests again that will f they will fail because they cannot access the application and that is of course extremely crucial we need to to uh uh we need to be in um, uh, we need to be connected we need to be able to connect to our application if we can't connect we can't connect fuck it it won't work anyway right so let's let's stop this uh, let's go back to test let's click stop all of this is good uh, and we can we can uh, turn this one off I'm gonna go uh, up a level here and do um, a git status uh, and we have this new thing with 
a new folder called basic acceptance testing so i will do git add dot on this one and uh, just do a git status uh, as a sanity check and we can see that we added a lot of stuff we're still excluding the node modules really really important when you do this kind of things uh, because you don't want to include those those node modules in your version control so i will just git commit and then am adds workshop up code for for basic uh, acceptance testing using oh using cypress io right there we go and then we're just going to push this up git push origin uh, main and if you are interested in checking out this code uh, which I hope you are actually you know you can you can pull this down and and um, um, and 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 uh, run it yourself and perhaps tweak and modify this this code a little bit you will find this on github uh, Thomas Ochman that's me uh, on the testing workshops right here we are if you have any comments about what we just spoke about then you are more than welcome to uh, make your voice heard in chat if you uh, if you think that's good now again yesterday we did this part unit tests in mocha and chai today we did acceptance tests with cypress io and later on today, uh, midday somewhere, I will be going back to streaming um, and running a full BDD TDD flow. I'm probably going to use uh, either vanilla JavaScript or perhaps React. Um, could be useful to to set up a React application. Let's see if I how I feel about that. Um, if you do react then you will have to do a little more a little more config configuration let's let's see what i feel like when when the time comes um but but yeah um uh, that's the that's the spirit i guess right that's that's how we play this um uh, we've been at it for two hours now people not much more to say um, for now the code is being pushed to uh, uh, to github go ahead and check it out we've covered a lot of ground uh, i hope i see you later um, yeah any questions reach out Thank you very much. Have a fantastic day, people. Um, coding is fun, uh, but there is also a life out there. And I will be spending some time in the garden today doing some manual labor. Is that how it's called? Just, you know, mowing the lawn or something. Uh, stay cool, stay safe, um, and stay healthy. Wash your hands. It does it for us for now. Stay cool. See you next time. Cheers.